Hey, Tammy Girl, who are you? What do you do? And what's your problem? Hi, Steve. Uh, my name is Tammy Girl, and Ann. I provide the bridge between profitable purpose and advertising. Um, so we use hashtags to further people's reach for events, on media promotions, and you know, and, and things like that. And so really, we solve their problem of organic reach um, in in a real time solution. So what's your problem? Problem is we have a lot of one offs. We're having a hard time establishing clientele that are our repeat customers, right? We're doing a lot of, like I said, one offs and and with the nature of advertising and and the sort of thing, they might not see really good results for three or six months and we're already long gone. They've forgotten we're the reason that they have those results. And so it's having a hard time steering towards setting up a better long term uh, product you know, for our clients at this time. And the clients are events, is that correct? Uh, events speakers who want to be put on stage. We get them in, in magazines. and and But, yes, event advertising, filling the seats, make sure they're getting in front of the right audience. How to leverage what's going on in town the day they have a large event. We, do, we help them do small pop-up events as, as well. So we're working with speakers and entrepreneurs, you know, who are out there on the road, um, looking for, you know, the, the best way to put their brand, you know, front and center. And so if I'm correct, you told me the problem was getting repeat clients or keeping them as consistent clients. Surely the problem there is letting them see the value that you bring. Is that not, would that be right? Um, yes, sir. Yeah, we're having, a, we're, we're having a poor time showing them that the success they have three months after they work from us is because of what we did, you know, uh, three months ago. We're, uh, yeah, that, that is a fair statement. So can't you get some kind of benchmark when you take them on to show them the kind of reach that they're getting, the kind of viewership they're getting before you started and then show them what they're getting two, three, six months down the line so they can see the escalating hike based on the work that you've done? Is there no way of actually providing them some kind of dashboard? There is. I mean, actually, we do have a dashboard. We do track um, these folks from the second they, they, they come on. Um, and, of course, then, too, it's, it's we have to have a client willing, and I guess this is our fault for lack of clarity, you know, they, they have to give us the access to be able to track their campaigns for three, six, nine months, whatever that looks like. You know, even if we've done a, a one-off full hashtag registration package, right, um, we need to be able to show the value of them allowing us to track the success so we can prove it did come from us six months later. And do you show them the dashboard? No, we do not currently. All right, so now we're starting to find problems. Okay, so first of all, on the onboarding, you need to have access. It's like it's like a doctor saying, hey, I want to inspect you, and you saying, hey, I'm not going to take off my shirt. You can't do the job that you can do unless they're willing to show you access that you can then track the campaign. You can't argue with facts. So if you say, hey, we want to get involved, but we're going to need access to this, this, this. We need you to confirm and commit that you will give us access in that to be able to track the work that we do. And then you give them a ground zero. And then during the campaign, you can show. They can't argue with that then. If you're able to show them in like two, three, six months. Now, of course, it's exposing you. So if you're not very good at what you do, hey, they're going to see that. If you are as good as we know you are, then they're also going to see that. And it's very hard to argue with, look at the graphs, look at the eyeballs. Now, transferring those eyeballs into uh, converted gigs, coaching, things like that, that's down to them. But you can pixel it as well that they will be followed and tracked as they go on a certain pages. So the two things I feel as though you've got a problem with is one, Maybe being a bit firmer at the beginning of the conversation and evaluating that they are going to give you that access. And two, then demonstrating it on a clear-cut dashboard. Okay. Are you okay for doing either one of those? Well, not either yeah, one, no, both. I, both. No, absolutely. You know, that, that's great. I think we do lack a certain clarity of who we should be working with when they come in and exactly, you know, what we need to be doing. I do agree that... I know communication on, on our end, you know, to start with for sure. So how are you getting the clients you're getting now? 
Um, right now, uh, honestly, hashtag lead generation. Um, we, I know when I search for a particular hashtag, two, two major things. It's in real time. So this individual is interested in that hashtag, using that hashtag in the moment. Um, and so we know they're the, uh, the ideal client. And then I, we, I request connecting with them and we start a conversation. I usually send them some sort of advice like, hey, did you know you've been this hashtag? Here's, here's our band hashtag list, right? And kind of, you know, what we do. If you'd like more organic reach, you know, let, let us know. So I'm starting those conversations right now uh, 100% with uh with hashtag leads because they're in real time you, you can't get a better um search than that right now so and for example if you go to google and you google real estate podcast or whatever eventually the same shit's going to keep popping up and up and up there's not much you can do to get fresh leads because hashtags are in real time i can go on any social platform including google and use the exact same hashtag three or four times a day every few hours going to get fresh results every time we have yet to see a, uh, an instance where we got the same results um, doing uh, multiple hashtag searches. And so um, it, it's the only weapon we have right now that's in real time. And you know you're, you're, uh, you're getting to the right people. So our, our closing rate has definitely gone up with that because we know we're reaching. As long as they know who they're looking for and they're using that hashtag and, it's, you know, no lack of clarity on their part. They're exactly who we're looking for. And we've had very good results with that. Do you feel at the moment that people are still confused as to what a hashtag is? Yes, absolutely. I think because of the bad um, advice fake gurus um, have given people where you want to use a viral hashtag and that's how you get rich and everything, because they don't understand how it works, um, it scares them, right? That because they it's just one more thing they feel they have to learn. There's a lot of rules involved. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people just don't understand um, you know, they actually have hashtag difficulty scores. So, so the, the easiest way is what I tell people is people who follow virus, ha, viral hashtags are not loyal. The second something else viral happens, they're gone with the wind. These are not the people you're trying to get as clients. And when you use a viral hashtag, your post on, well, on Twitter, it's less than five seconds. And every other um, platform, it's about 10 seconds before your brand is completely buried under hundreds of thousands of other posts that will never be found. Do you vocalize this with the people that you are speaking with at the beginning of the conversation? I No, sir, I'm not. I just that clicked it as I was explaining right. to you. I so do not. You've got knowledge. You've got information. Uh, you've got credibility within the world of, of hashtags. You're going to love this next statement, but you're aware that the biggest problem you've got with capturing clients and keeping them is you. It's 100% me. I know that. That's why we're having this conversation. <laughs> so if you can just make a point of making sure the discovery call covers, and I would write it down. I would write down the five topics that you are going to identify in that discovery call. And there's a whole big argument I have with paying for discovery calls, free discovery calls. If anyone is concerned about giving away a free discovery or, or charging for a discovery call, Make it a donation. Make a $50 donation to save the sea lions. And if you're going to have a conversation with them, someone's benefiting. But the downside is the first filter, the first qualification you ever want of any person you have on a call, on a call is that they can afford to action what you've just recommended. There's no point in having a free conversation and then go, well, to do this is going to cost you $500 and have them go, Oh, but I don't have $500, you know, can you help me? You don't want that shit. So the bottom line of it is, I would say, look, we do a strategy call, not discovery. We do a strategy call where we will identify the hashtags you're using. We'll go through to see if they've been blacklisted. I'll also bring you up to speed. This is all information that will help you and you can take away. However, if you decide to then retain us to enhance your hashtag strategy, the call will be used towards the first invoice. And that will qualify that people have a pain, have a need, and are willing to pay for something, and they have the capital to do something. And then I would select, say, the five topics. So you can say, in the strategy call, we're going to cover the point of hashtags, the strategy that you're currently using, if any, with hashtags, we'll do a sweep to find out if you're using any blacklisted hashtags and actually run it through it so people can go, oh, this call benefits me. 
And I don't care if you charge a hundred bucks when they pay, they pay attention. So that's, that's what I would start doing now. Do you charge for your strategy calls? Um, I do. So, but we do the other thing. So when folks jump off call with me, they have to show me a screenshot where they donated at least $25 to, um, uh, a mental health, um, nonprofit okay. that we work with. Okay, good. All right. So you're making them a okay, gate. Fantastic. So that challenges them very well to get involved. They have to take action in order to be able to get to you. So that's fantastic. And then have you gone through utilizing more of a strategy call rather than a discovery call? Because let's be serious, a discovery call is just code for sales call. I'm going to expose how bad you're doing something, and then I'm going to sell you my product. Strategy call focuses on what you're doing, how you're doing it, and whether it can be benefited or bettered, and then you go into that part. So strategy calls give them advice that they can take away and implement without the use of you or anyone around you now. So that has you... not been what I've been doing. <laughs> no, not at all. More right. of a, it's been more of a sales call of, um, you know, here's what we do, how it will benefit you. And here, here's, here's what it costs, which well, I'm we speaking to you because know... it's selling horribly. <laughs> we both know that the best sales is to establish the value that you can create in the relationship with that person. So by you, as you have now, exposing the fact that you know about hashtags, you know how to work them, you know how to operate them, you know how people are using them badly, you know, you're showing credibility. And we all know if we stand up there and go, hey, these are the 10 things you need to do with your hashtag strategy. By the time you've got to the 10th, now just sitting there going, okay, when are they going to stop talking? When am I going to be able to chat with them? And when am I going to be able to see if I can retain them to do it? Because I don't have the time. So, establishing what you can do and how you can help them is the sales call while also at the same time helping them. I've had many people that I've done strategy calls with. I've run through the stuff and they've gone, hey, thank you very much. And I've gone, great. Do what you want with it or reach back out to me. And if you take me on a coach or train or do anything like that, then we'll knock that off for the uh, first invoice. And they've gone, oh yeah, no, it's great. I've got, and I'm like, brilliant. And then they've gone off and had that kids do it or they've had that secretary do it or they've had someone else do it only to come back three months later going, eh, I need you. And the offer still applies. Well, we know we had the call. The call was X, Y, Z, whatever the dollars were. So we're knocked that off because it doesn't change. So uh, I, I believe establishing your knowledge and what it is you do by just helping them in that strategy call is the best sales call you can do. So how, how do you help? Because I know it's how I come across, but how do you help someone who doesn't understand what you're talking about when, when your product is something that they have bad information on or they're not used to? Well, for, for the start, if they paid to the charity, then they obviously have a fear. They have a fear or they have a pain. Um, and usually ignorance is a pain. I don't understand this. This is why I'm coming to you. Help me understand it. Should I ignore it? Should I do it? One of the biggest pains going to be, hey, you think you know about hashtags, but you're doing it wrong. Quite often, doing nothing can be better than doing it wrong because there's damage that's got to be repaired now. You know, think of someone doing open heart surgery on someone that only knows how to build a cabinet. You know, you don't want to mess that up. So if you actually are talking to people, you can establish and you can ask them a question. Where is your knowledge within this field? You know, how, how qualified are you in the conversation that we're going to have on hashtags? What do you know? And they may turn around and go, I actually know nothing. Great. So let's start here. Oh, I know everything. Great. So let's walk through what strategy are you using now and start quizzing them. There's nothing worse than a part educated person. Okay. The barstool genius, as we usually call him in England. So you want to have that conversation. That can be question number one. How qualified are you within the subject matter of hashtags today? And if so, what strategy are you using? And why is it not getting you the benefits? So I actually start imposing that within the conversations to identify where that pain is. If they're paying you, I'm suspecting they don't know a lot. And that's why you're there. You're there to help them get more educated. Getting them more educated provides the ability for you to go, look, this is what you need to be doing. If you can't do it, if you don't have the time to do it, we have this. And that's where you flip into your sales call. But I very openly say to people, how qualified are you in the subject we're about to talk about? 
now the the last biggest hurdle we have is we run into this a lot where the the owner you know the entrepreneur will get on the line with us, but they're using a marketing company or somebody else is doing their their hashtags and and their and their media that's kind of third party and they're screwing it up and try to educate you know that who they're working with. We're not trying to steal them as a media client. There's a lot of stuff we don't do, as you know, um, but they're working with somebody who's doing marketing that is driving their hashtag brand straight into the ground. Well, you got a couple of things there. You know, you again, yeah. you don't ask a dentist to do open heart surgery. So everyone must stick to that lane. So if they're contacting you, they've got a problem. If they're contacting you, they've got pain. Something's going on. And if you turn around and go, hey, let's just have a look. And you can go through. I know you've got a lot of technology. You can go through the technology and expose it on a shared screen on a, on a Zoom call or something and go, hey, this is how you're doing now. What don't you like about it? And it could be tiny little bubbles. It could be deficit. It could be great spikes, but infrequently. So you can go, what don't you like about it? And you go, well, I, I paid this company. Well, I'm not here to diss the company. But the facts are the facts. This is your feed. This is what you're getting. Oh, by the way, you happen to be using 10 banned hashtags. So by exposing this, they can go back to the company and there's stuff. I know there's a lot of marketing and media and branding that you don't touch. There's a lot of yep. uh, marketing that we don't touch. Know your lane. They can very easily go back to that company that they partnered with and go, hey, I'm happy with you doing X, X Y, Z, but I don't want you touching the hashtag strategy anymore. I've got that, you know? So I believe today we should focus on sticking to your lane, show them again via the uh, technology that you've got where they currently are. The daft thing is a lot of people think they are in a different place to where they currently are. They think they're doing better than they are or they think they're doing worse than they are. You know, we had a client the other day that was going crazy because he thought everything was going wrong. And we're like, have you looked at this? Your curve is beautiful. You know, you haven't faltered from it. Keep doing what you're doing. It, it'll flip over. But you're fine. And we had a strategy call with him. We didn't take him on as a client because he just sure as shit didn't need us. But if you've got that technology to be able to boldly expose to them where they are and then ask the question, what's wrong with this picture? They may say nothing. I'm really happy. Great. Now you can go away comfortable. Or, hey, it's not getting me the returns I need. Great. What can we do about it? And that's when you go in. But if someone's working with someone else, the facts don't lie. Okay. You strong enough to be absolutely. able to do that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would definitely, to, to, to summarize here, I would definitely focus on that technology. I would focus on it being a strategy call, not a discovery call. I would make sure that you had five elements that you were going to go over so that they knew what they were going to get within the call. And I'd ask the first question, how qualified are you in this conversation we're about to have? Okay. I appreciate that. No, that helped a lot. I knew the whole problem was me. So <laughs> I'm just getting it lined it, up right. We're entrepreneurs. Most of the problems we have in life are us. <laughs> it's, it's what That's happens. True. But um, I, I hope that helps you. Yes, it helps a lot. I appreciate it. Tammy Girl, thanks for being part of the Sims Distillery and Speakeasy family and uh, go in action, everything we spoke about. And I wish you all the best with it. Will do. And I'll let you know how it works out. Thanks. Please do. Bye. Hey, this is Steve Sims. And I hope you liked that episode of Being Coached by Steve Sims. Subscribe over here. Watch some other cool videos over here. Or for your chance to be coached by me for the YouTube series, join here at simsdistillery.com.